Hi everyone, good to see you all again and welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Josh and I give pre-med advice. Today I wanted to talk about my personal statement. And what I mean by my personal statement is my primary personal statement that I wrote on the AMCAS application, which is used to apply to U.S. allopathic medical schools. These are schools that give you the name MD after your last name. Osteopathic is DO. I did not apply to any osteopathic schools. I only applied to 16 allopathic U.S. schools. Out of those 16 schools, I've gotten about, I think, seven or eight interviews. At this point, I've lost count, which is a good problem to have. And I've gotten three acceptances and one wait list, and I'm still waiting to hear back from more schools. So this personal statement has gotten me into medical school. And it's valuable information that I'd like to share with you all, because I know it's very hard to find guidance when it comes to essay writing, especially when it comes to medical school. And it's not really that straightforward of a process, given that it's extremely subjective objective and that you need to dig into the motivations that made you want to pursue medicine, which is something that is not really easy to think about within five minutes. This is something that you have to come back and visit time after time after time again, and really think about what was it that solidified your decision to go into medicine. In my experience, my primary personal statement took me about a year to write. I didn't write it all at once. Rather, I would write it within a span of like three to four weeks, and then I would take a break for about a week, and then I would come back to it and visit it again. If I had to give an estimate of the number of drafts that took me to finish my complete personal statement, I would say it probably took me about 25. And by no means is my personal statement a perfect document, but what I mean to illustrate with this point is that you need to spend a lot of time writing your personal statement. And something like mine is what came out of the product of over a year of writing my statement and really thinking about the motivations that made me pursue medicine and that capture my personality so that the admissions officers can get to know who I am outside of the piece of paper and the statistics that I had on my AMCAS application. So that's what the personal statement is used for. It's used as a tool so that the admissions officers can get to know you better as an applicant and see what drives you to pursue medicine. Anyway, with that aside, I'm going to get into my own personal statement, which captures the reason why I decided to go into medicine. Keep in mind that this statement is uh, very close and very dear to me. It's something that's very personal to me. It's something that I really treasure. It's really the reason why I want to go into medicine. And it's something that is touching to me personally. As a personal statement should be, it should capture your deepest motivations as to why you want to go into medicine. So without further ado, I will read my personal statement to you all. Enjoy. The doctor held my mother's hand as he diagnosed my grandpa with stage 4 lung cancer. Tears rushed down my face as I searched for a glimpse of hope that my tata would defeat the cancer. However, my wishful optimism failed as his cancer worsened. I couldn't fathom that tata, who had been a part of my life for 12 years, was to soon disappear forever. As his suffering was unbearable, tata made the decision to discontinue his treatment. I opposed it and urged the doctor to try to change his mind. The doctor calmly explained they had done everything they could and that we cannot stop life from ending. What we could do, though, was give him the best ending by being with him in his last moments, allowing him to be at peace. Confused, I asked, he'll be at peace? To which the doctor replied, yes, he'll be at peace. After hearing those words, my mind became tranquil. Even though the doctors could not do anything medically for Tata, they respected his autonomy, comforted me and my family, and respected our faith by sending a chaplain to sing hymns. Oftentimes, the best medicine the doctor can give is to show that he cares by sitting next to a young boy scared to lose his grandpa and reassure him everything will be okay. From that moment, I realized medicine was far more than just physical treatment. Inspired by the doctor's support, I began shadowing primary care physician Dr. X. I met a visibly distressed patient. After her visit, she nervously asked Dr. X if he could sign work exemption papers for paid time off due to her condition. Unfortunately, Dr. X was unable to, as the institutional health care policy did not allow it. From this news, the patient became upset as she strongly vocalized for her needs. This is unlike anything I had ever seen since the vast majority of Dr. X's patient encounters were positive. 
this one negative interaction struck with me. And I realized the dark reality of medicine where many patient communities do not get the health care they need and have to advocate for themselves. Dr. X sat down with her and apologized as he treated the condition to make the pain go away, impressing me with his efforts to accommodate the patient the best he could. From learning about the challenges of underserved communities, I am inspired to address these social barriers for my patients to access the care they deserve. After bearing witness to an underserved patient, I wanted to give back through volunteering. I was on the stroke floor and entered a patient's room when she suddenly said in Mandarin, can you please give me some socks? I gave her the socks to which she thanked me. Having studied Mandarin for four years, I responded, you're welcome. Her eyes widened with amazement, shocked that someone could understand her. She shared she had two sons, one who was an emergency doctor and the other a software engineer. And because they both worked so much and had their own families to take care of, it was hard for them to visit her frequently. Hearing this saddened me, but I was glad I could provide her with company as we bonded over that language. Such patients often need interpreters and thus feel removed from their healthcare provider. Therefore, as an aspiring physician who is multilingual, I am motivated to bridge cultural gaps by enhancing trust and quality of care for patients, providing them uh, with comfortability and inclusion. After such a genuine patient interaction, I exposed myself to the reality of healthcare when I became a GI surgical aide in a colonoscopy lab. I encountered a college football player and Dr. Gary, an anesthesiologist, told me that since his patient was very young and strong, he needed a higher dose of propofol to sedate him as he was capable of fighting back. Dr. Gary had to tread a fine line because he wanted to ensure the patient was fully sedated, but not to where the patient's respiration started to depress. As he injected the patient, the monitor stayed green and beeped fine for a few seconds. But all of a sudden, the monitor changed to red and started sounding a chaotic alarm, indicating the patient's breathing dropped drastically. Dr. Gary and the care team scrambled to stabilize his breathing. I could not help but want to partake in the situation, but I was not trained to further assist in this emergency. It all happened so fast, and with great relief, the patient's breathing restabilized. I realized I wanted to be more involved in medicine and have the knowledge and training needed to better respond to emergencies. I want to push back the limits of my job description and have a more direct role in medical care. And that right there is my primary medical school personal statement. So I wanted to break down my personal statement, given that I just read it to you all. And they included several key points that were very instrumental to me pursuing medicine. The very first paragraph dealt with me coping with the, the loss of my grandpa. It was the very first time that I experienced death so close to me. And it was something that I couldn't really fathom at the time at all. When I was 13 years old, I, I didn't know that cancer had stages where it was untreatable. I always thought that every single cancer was treatable at that time, given that I was so young at that age. So it was, it just broke my world when I found out that stage four lung cancer was untreatable. And even though I was going through a negative time period and a very difficult time, the comfort and the peace that the doctors were given to me and my family, and the fact that they were, they were there for us rather than just saying there's nothing we can do medically, and then they were on their way out. I was really appreciative of how the doctors spent time with me and my family. And that was something that really planted the seed within me, seeing how compassionate doctors are with their patients and with their families, especially with families who are about to lose a very close loved one. And in my second paragraph, it was about a very specific encounter that I had while shadowing one of the doctors who I shadowed. And it really touched me and was something I felt the need to include in my personal statement because it was an encounter that really stuck with me. And it was the first time where I saw the realities of patients often not getting the care that they desire. Because most of the times when I shadowed physicians and saw their patients, it was usually a very mundane, positive encounter. However, this one just really touched me and it was something that I felt the need to include because there are still issues in healthcare and they do need to be addressed. 
And that's something that medical schools want to see that you have an awareness of. They want to see that you want to go into medicine in order to address the lack of health care for certain groups of people. And that is a very strong motivator to go into medicine, which ties into my third point that I made within my personal statement. And that was about my ability to connect with other patients of different cultural backgrounds. Because one of my strengths that I have personally that I really wanted to highlight was that I'm able to speak many different languages. Well, English and Spanish and then Mandarin Chinese. A lot of people find it very shocking that I know how to speak Mandarin. And there's very few people who look like me who can actually speak Mandarin Chinese, which says a lot because it shows that I was willing to go out and learn a language that was completely foreign to me. And in spite of the difficulties and challenges that came with it, I was still able to connect with the patient who I otherwise would not have been able to connect with had I not known how to speak Mandarin. Because when I encountered this patient at the time, all she spoke was Mandarin and the conversation they had with her was completely in Mandarin. She told me all of this information about her two sons and how they didn't come to visit her very often in Mandarin. And for those of you out of curiosity who want to see me speak Mandarin, there's a video linked up here or here or wherever it is on the screen. I think it's a very unique skill that I have when it comes to healthcare. And I have used it a couple of times within my healthcare work experiences, and it's something that I'm very excited to keep using as a physician. And I potentially want to improve my Mandarin so that I'm more medically adept to saying medical terminologies in Mandarin Chinese. That is essentially capturing the third point of my personal statement that I wanted to address that I was able to connect to patients culturally who are of different cultural backgrounds. And it's something that I still want to keep doing as a physician. And then the last experience was probably one of the most influential for me to pursue medicine. It was the experience that definitely said, yup, I'm pursuing medicine for real. Because at the time when I was a GI surgical aide, I was required to get a CPR certification. But then when this emergency scenario with this patient happened in the colonoscopy room, I really wanted to help the patient by doing chest compressions, which was the only thing I knew how to do. However, the anesthesiologist who was like right next to me right here, Dr. Gary, he was like an anesthesiologist for like 30 years. He immediately got out his arm and then stopped me. And he said, nope, turns out that a CPR certification can't really help in this situation. So what they needed to do was to intubate the patient. I forgot what it was that they administered to this patient, but whatever it was, it ended up working because the patient's breathing ended up uh, stabilizing. But I remember in that moment, it was completely scary. I didn't know what to do. My heart just raced and it sank. And I really felt for this patient because I had never seen anybody who didn't want to breathe without them wanting to, if that makes sense. It was a very scary situation and something that it really woke me up to pursue medicine because ultimately I want to become a doctor for the fact that if there's an emergency scenario, I want to be able to help someone in that situation. And I think that is something very powerful that medicine does. So overall, with the personal statement, what medical schools are looking for is that they're looking for the experiences within your life that shaped you to become a doctor. They're not looking for, oh, I like science. I want to help people. They're not looking for very generic statements at all. They want to see that your motivations are very true and authentic to your experiences and to why you want to pursue medicine. And I want to say that even though I was pretty involved in healthcare from my work experience as a GI surgical aide, by no means do I really know what it's like to become a doctor. And that's really the whole point of the personal statement. They want to see that from your experiences trying to get involved in healthcare as much as you can, that you have an idea of why you want to become a physician. So that when you're in medical school, your passion can develop even more for becoming a physician and you'll eventually match into the specialty that is meant for you. Medical schools want you to have an understanding that you don't know what it's entirely like to become a doctor. However, based off of what you see, you could see yourself fitting within that field. I hope this video really helped and gave you a perspective as to how to write a personal statement because it's something that's not really too easy to come across. It's something that's not really that easy to do. And it's because it's completely subjective and up to the experiences that you've had in your life. As I said earlier in my video, be sure to take time thinking about these experiences. In the meantime, I will see you all later and I wish you the best in writing your personal statements. Comment down below if you have any specific questions and I'll be happy to answer. Bye. For those of you interested in my personal statement services, please look in the description below. I offer quite a few of them and I would be happy to look over your personal statement.